I tried to recall the madness that caused me to enter the Forest of Secrets. I could have gone around it. It would have only added three days to my journey. I reached for the message pouch containing the cargo secreted in my saddle. Greed has compelled me into this light-forsaken place. The trees cluster so close around this narrow stone path I cannot see more than three arm spans into the forest before my line of sight is blocked. The boughs of the trees are dark. I imagine they are actually brown, however the lack of light makes them appear black. Leaves decorate the trees. They are dark brown and their serrated edges cut me as I run my finger along them. My skin crawls at the sensation. I feel cold. The pain is worse than it should be. Nothing about this place is as it should be. The journey through the Forest of Secrets should last six hours. Six hours on horseback and back into full sunlight. A few stray sunbeams penetrate the canopy. The light actually seems to make the situation worse. The dark is bad enough, but when the light falls between the branches it creates shadows, and the shadows are worse than the dark. They seem blacker, and I swear to you, they move. Something catches my eye and I wonder if there is possibly an animal in the trees. Of course there is not. Everyone knows that nothing lives in the forest, nothing except the trees. The silence is disconcerting. It is not natural. I have carried messages and items across many miles of many continents. Everywhere you go there is noise. There are sounds of nature. In this place there is only the sound of silence. I place booted feet to the flank of my horse, urging the animal forward, urging her forward. The sooner I'm out of here, the sooner I am paid. She wickers nervously, however, she moves forward. She has carried me through many lands, and she has never once failed me. She forces herself forward, as do I. Rider and animal, we are one. She canters at first and then speeds up. I hope to be out of the forest in less than six hours. I have heard the tales. Many riders have ridden into the dark place and never returned. Of course, there are worse stories. I've heard tales of men escaping the clutches of this place, shadows of their former selves. I remember I once met one of these men in a tavern. He sat staring into the fire, his eyes vacant and distant. He clutched his tankard, the drink slowly swirling around and becoming gradually warmer as he ignored it. He said nothing all night. He bought one drink all night. When he left... It was untouched, and not a man could recall him ever saying a word. His silent stare into the fire, the most disturbing thing I had ever seen. My horse continues through the forest and I listen for any sign of danger. The silence is broken only by the clatter of hooves on the road. Clip-clop, clip-clop, clip-clop. No one was ever able to tell me who had dared to build the road through the forest. Some people believe that the road is ancient, here long before the trees. Some people whisper that the forest is a predator and the road is simply the web it uses to trap its prey. No one knows for certain. The journey passes and I sense that the day is late. The temperature drops, light fails and weariness settles in on me. I presume that the sun has dipped below the horizon and outside this dark and quiet place twilight is setting upon the land. I lose track of time. Sunlight feels like nothing more than a dim and distant memory. Shivers run up my spine as the temperature drops again, and I clutch my cloak to myself, hoping to ward off cold and fear. I look ahead at the featureless road. It stretches for miles, seemingly endless. I know this cannot be true. People do leave the forest. Not all of them end up like the man by the fire. I know the must road must have an end. It cannot go on forever, surely. Clip-clop, clip-clop, clip-clop. The horse trots and I feel reassurance at the rhythmic sound and motion. I know the horse is warm from the ride, however, even with the horse under me and the cloak over me, I still shiver. Clip-clop, clip-clop, clip-clop. Up ahead there is something different. It is distant and I see it as a slight change in texture. I cannot make it out, however, I know it is a wooden post painted white. I know this because it is common knowledge that halfway through the forest there is a white post. Carved from trees cut down from the forest, it is the one thing in this forest, no, of this forest, that gives hope. Clip-clop, clip-clop, clip-clop. I feel a surge of elation. I'm halfway through. Soon I will emerge from this dark and quiet and rejoin the rest of the world. Soon I will reach my destination and I will laugh about my silly fears about the quiet. I will laugh and I will tell stories. Men will mock me, though most will not enter the forest themselves to prove their bravery. 
They will accept that I've done a terrifying thing and they will buy me drinks. I will be a hero. A hero of the moment and I will feel good. The thought sustains me and I use it to banish the growing fear in me. Perhaps it was a bad idea. Fear would have kept me alert. Fear would have urged me to caution. Fear would have prevented me from putting my heels to the flanks of my horse. However, in my mind, I'm already drunk on the beer of other men. In my mind, I'm already the hero, the toast of the town. I'm the man who braved the forest of secrets and won. Caught in my reverie, I fail to see the low branch looming over the road. It strikes me across the face, scratching my cheek. Overbalancing, I fall off the back of my horse. I probably would have st struck the branch one way or another. However, if I was not moving so far, so fast, perhaps the impact would not have sent me falling. Perhaps if I had been paying attention, I could have regained my balance and remained seated. Landing on the ground with a thud, I feel despair as I hear my horse continue its journey. Clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. It still moves quickly along the road, desperate to be away from here. My vision is blurred, though I can vaguely make out her shape disappearing into the distance. I shout out at the animal, though my voice is barely more than a croak. My cry is strangled and I feel tightness on my cheeks, cold creeping across my face. I try to regain my feet, however I fail. I stumble and fall face first into the dirt, tasting it. It is rank. It tastes of death. I must have passed out. I don't recall losing consciousness. I do remember opening my eyes and feeling fatigue. And in that moment, between full wakefulness and sleep, I see them. I see two bare legs, not more than an arm's length from my head. They are filthy and I see moss and leaves growing from their skin. I'm gripped by terror, not knowing if I should flee or remain perfectly still. The legs begin moving away, so I fight my urge to run. I hold my breath and listen to the sound of my heart pounding in my ears. And then I hear something, something terrifying, a dreadful sound coming from the direction of the feet. Hey, hum, hey, hum. I realise that it's coming from the figure. More terrifying than this sudden intrusion on the quiet is the fact that I can hear the sound all around me, different tones from different directions. No longer able to control my urge to remain silent, I try to scream. I feel numbness across my face and fail. A muffled gasp is the best I can manage. Something is covering my mouth, holding it shut. I had not noticed it before, and yet it is there. Reaching for my mouth, touching my face and tracing around my lips, I feel horror. There is a leaf stuck to my face, which no amount of tugging will remove. Almost as shocking is the fact that I can see my hands perfectly in the dark. They are the same colour as the legs I had only seen moments before, and my left hand is covered in moss. I sit upright and look around. A dozen people are standing around me. Each of them has the skin that is the colour of the forest floor. Leaves, bark and moss grow all over them. Knees, hands, face and chests. Each of them has the same deathly stare from behind glassy black eyes. Jumping to my feet, I run, hoping that I'm heading for the road. My heart feels like it may burst. I cannot find the path. Cold realisation hits me that I have gotten turned around and running deeper into the forest causes panic to set in. I no longer care. All I want to do is run. Air rushes across my face. How long have I been running? Hours? Minutes? Seconds? I don't know. Time no longer has a meaning for me. I see one of them ahead of me again, droning on. Hey, hum, hey, hum, hey, hum. I stumble to a stop and reverse myself running through the trees. I find my footing is sure despite the roots of the great oaks. I also find that I could dodge every branch with no apparent effort. It avails me not at all. Everywhere I run there is another one of them, and when I turn and try to escape there are others. They are motionless, terrifying, and everywhere. Hey, hum, hey, hum, hey, hum. Leaves fall from nearby trees and drift toward me. Moss and dirt creep up my legs, devouring clothes and me. Where they stop, they stay. I pull at the leaves, scrape at the moss and the dirt. Nothing works. The black eyes regard me without emotion. <coughs> 
I try to duck past one, however it sticks out its arm and I run into it. It feels like running into a tree, and I fall to the ground. Hey hum, hey hum, hey hum. They now stand over me, motionless. I try to get up, however I cannot. I feel like I am stuck to the ground. Leaves continue to fall, moss and dirt continue to cover me. My skin already looks like theirs. Hey hum, hey hum, hey hum. They say that your entire life flashes before your eyes at the end. It did not for me. I only saw my last mistake. I should never have come into this forest. And now I left this mistake over and over in my mind. The moment it tasted me, I was doomed to become just one more victim of the forest of secrets. Just one more keeper. Hey, hum, hey, 